It's about two stars. We we'll talk about code or whatever we'll talk about today. It's about two stars, so please hang tight while I check that everything is okay. Sound check, camera check, lights check. How's my hair? Oh, wait, I don't have any hair. Maybe put some pants on and I am good to go. So get ready wherever you are. How's this stream is about to start? Get ready wherever you are. How's this stream is about to start? Hello everyone and welcome to another meeting of the C++ Digital Signal Processing Juice and plenty of other things study group. How are you all doing? Very good. How are you, Leandro? Good. So on the call we have Fochis and we also have Siwits, but Siwits is super quiet. Do yes. you also hear Siwits super oh, quiet, Fochis? Yes, it's very quiet. Yes, yes, okay. it's very quiet. I, I don't know why it is. No. Oh. Unfortunately, there is nothing that I can do about this on my side because I don't have control over the levels of individual people. I just have control over oh. the level of the Skype call in general. But I guess we'll make do. So, uh, Fosis, you were telling Am us I, that you, yes. you were doing some things, you coded some things and they didn't work and that yeah. you have other comments <laughs> on other related topics. So, do you want to get started? Yes. Um, I'm gonna share my screen in just a minute. I just want to uh, get my resources ready, my links and stuff. Sorry. Yeah, uh, no problem. Okay. And Mage is here on the chat. Oh, hey, hey. hey what's Mage. up? Thanks for joining us today. So yeah, I'm gonna share my screen now. Uh, Share screen and share computer sound. So I coded something today. And when, and when I say coded, I mean I follow the coding tutorial uh, word by word. It's something, right? It's better than nothing. But uh, the good thing about David Healy, the guy who created the tutorial. Like. Oh, We're just going to focus on this part hear him. today. Just the anyway, so David Healy is... Uh, creating a lot of HISC uh, tutorials. And I think he is a co-developer by this point. Oh, by the way, speaking of co-developer, before we begin, I have to say some exciting news about HISC. Hmm. I'm gonna give you guys a sneak peek. Uh, first of all, I didn't make the, the update yet and I'll explain why. Uh, let's go to the HISC repository. Here it is. So, First of all, uh, you may have noticed that this is the master branch, but yesterday it was merged with the develop branch, which is uh, something that, that, that doesn't happen very often. In fact, the last time this happened was on March 2021. Uh, and the reason is because, sorry, uh, now you can actually build HISC using Visual Studio 2022. I didn't try it yet, I'm still waiting because here is the other thing. Can you see here in the releases? Uh, the latest stable release version 2 was released on 2018. However, if we go to insights and then network, and then use, I like to use the arrow keys for this. Uh, one sec. Yeah, the network tab is usually a bit laggy because GitHub has to mm. go and find all the forks and make a plot yeah. out of them. Yeah, and HISC has a lot of them. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so do, do you see this one that's called pre-release? And there is a little hint here. 
that uh, we're going to version three soon. So this is very uh, exciting. I can't wait to get this table version three and I will try to compile it with uh, Visual Studio 2022 and see if uh, this uh, has any effect on the time needed to build the VST2 and 3 plugins because with my current install, the VST2 building is rather quick. I think it takes uh, 10 to 15 minutes, but VST3 is painfully slow. I remember on the last stream where we had you had to wait for me and it still wouldn't compile. So this is not just compiling the tool, it is compiling your plugins that have been developed using the tool. Am I right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's so, <clears throat> terrible. That's very long for compilation time. Using Juice, well... Oh, no, 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 the, wait. I, it's two separate things. The, co the compilation of HIC is very short. I was talking about the compilation, the building of plugins inside HIC with this export function. Yeah, that's this what I'm talking about. This is the thing that you have to do yeah. often, and it is the yeah. thing that takes the longest time. That's mm -hmm. terrible news. Yeah. Using something like Juice, yes, granted, my Juice projects are doing much less than your HISE projects, <laughs> but still, it is in the matter of seconds. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, maybe. Uh, so this tutorial is about making an XY pad in HISE, and I succeeded it. Actually, I, I watched the tutorial and I built exactly the thing that David has created here. Okay. Um, but this wasn't my problem. The problem is that I couldn't um, actually get this XY pad to use because uh, the, all this does in the tutorial is uh, assigning this to LFO modulators, as you can see here, which yeah. are controlled by MIDI. But here I have created two samplers and each one of them has its own game modulators and I haven't figured out how to send the messages from this to this and from this to this. Uh, now I'm going to walk you through the code and I'll show you what I did and what I remember from David's uh, tutorial. So I guess uh, one thing to be yes. said is that with the tutorial, if you follow every step, you will succeed, which is yes. good because it's Here not the always XY the button. case. <laughs> yes. If As you go here, both knows very actually... well because of the iPlug tutorial. It's not always the case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but David makes very good tutorials, and you can see I'm moving my XY pad, and I'm controlling this knob. And if I go to the other, I'm using the XY, and I'm controlling this knob. So it worked. Uh, now I, have, I only all I have to do is assign these values to these modulators, and I have no idea how to do it because I'm still uh, looking for things. Anyway, I'm gonna show you the code, and then I'm gonna show you what I wanted to build but failed, uh, and then I'll tell you what I did for it, and we'll probably see it in the next meeting. Anyway, so yeah. So for context, playing, the reason why you have this is. I remember last meeting you mentioned that you had two knobs that you would like to link somehow to control them in tandem. And is this related yeah. to that? Yeah, partially. I, okay. I, this is a different uh, synth this time. It's not, uh, but it, I could use it to the other, the hybrid synth that I made. But this is going to be just two samplers and I want to use the, uh, the XY pad to crossfade between them. So if you have this all the way to the upper left, you only listen to one sampler. If you have it to the center, you listen to both or on top of both. If you are on the top right corner, you only listen to the second sampler. And these two should mute both samplers. Does it make sense? Okay, so, so you were doing wet more. and dry and gain on yeah. a two-dimensional axis. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so let's I think I heard Siwit saying code. something, but I couldn't extra, exactly oh, yeah. make out I what did, he said. I, can I you did, can yeah. you say I that again? I don't know why my oh, microphone is working so, so quiet, but... Oh, now we can hear you. Probably it's dying. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> it's better now. Oh, okay. 
So what were you trying to say, Siwitz? I'm not nothing. Okay. Sitting to your your study. Anyway, so this is uh, the tutorial stands, starts with this. You create a panel. Sorry. Uh, these are no. Uh, wait, where is the? <laughs> I forgot. This uh, layered interface is kind of getting on my nerves. Uh, there's so much to do. Oh, there you go. So this is the panel. Uh, it was very well hidden. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so this code is doing this. First of all, you declare two variables that are the x, y axis. And your, so we begin with this one. You get the component. component and then we skip those. We go to this later. Then you create these variables, which are the x and y. And these um, values are the x, the y. Oh, no, wait, that's not it. Uh, oh, yeah, he used it. There it is. So there is the x, the y, and the width and the height. And these commands are done so that they don't allow you to they don't allow the, the dot to go outside the bounds of the project. If you don't have this one, if you delete it and press compile, then, uh, oh, now it's not even then moving, it takes, I broke it. It takes a long time to compile. No, it doesn't. Oh, wait, it does, you're right. <laughs> well, uh, it takes a long time to export right. to a VST, but this is the interface designer no, no, no. in HISC uh, itself. No, yeah, it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's because I have uh, tabs and programs open. When I did it before, it took five seconds, uh, and less. Hmm. Uh, anyway, so these are the modulators that we are assigned in the master, and these mods are referenced here. They're constant, and there is a constant for the size, which is twenty. If I change this then the dot becomes smaller, obviously. Uh, you can actually color it. And this you can uh, replace this with a console command that uh, prints the exact X and Y coordinates in pixels, which is a cool thing. You can see it in David's video. Uh, so yeah, I pretty much nailed this, but I have to figure out how to connect these to this. And yeah, I cannot explain it any better than David says in his video. I'm sorry about that. But I'm going to show you what I plan to do, and we're going to go to Reaper. First, I went to one of the schools I work in, and they had this thing. It's a Yamaha PSR 350. And uh, you may be familiar with the uh, general MIDI mapping. By the way, speaking of general MIDI, is Tail on the chat? I can see you right now. Is he in the chat? <laughs> I don't think so. You know but why I'm asking. What's the question? Come because on. perhaps we can answer. Oh, uh, no, I just uh, I pressured Tail to create that general MIDI synth a long time ago. <laughs> Mm. But I'm sure he has a lot on his plate right now and he's working with iPlug anyway, so I don't want to pressure him anymore. <laughs> anyway, so in this, uh, in the 087 and 088, there are the sine wave and the square wave. And uh, to make things more interesting, I took out my phone and recorded the output of the speakers instead of using the line-ins because I wanted to record the ambience and the children who were playing in the background. Uh, I'm not going to play the raw recordings, but i show you what I did in Reaper. So I, this is the middle C from the, uh, from the sign in the square of that uh, keyboard. This is the sign. And this is the square. No, uh, wait, I think this is the square on the saw. I don't remember, something like that. But yeah, those are, I recorded a lot more. So this is twice because I did a, a fancy, weird, a little frequency separation thing. Here I'm using Slew 3 by Air Windows. 
uh, which is a very sexy low pass filter. For those of you who were with us on um, yesterday's stream with Aria, it's the the Jennifer low pass of her windows. Look how sexy it is. Uh, and funny story, one of my favorite plugins used to be Slew 2 because it was a great low pass filter. And then on August 30, 2020, which was my birthday, uh, Air Windows happened to release Slew 3 on that day, and it was <laughs> like a, the best birthday gift he could give me. So this is how it sounds without the low pass. And this is with the low pass. And on the other side, I have, uh, let's turn this down. It may be Skype, it may be my headphones, because I'm on the meeting headphones, oh. not on the music production headphones, but I got to say, they sound very similar, if not the same to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you can listen to it later. A Li little okay. bit quieter, this, probably. This is the other part, which is a high pass. And here I used the high pass from Leandro's cramp test. <laughs> the Vicanic one. <laughs> nice. And and here I used the Bose. It's a band pass, by the way. Uh, yeah, a band pass, yeah. And here I used the Bose filter, the adding and the subtracting EMAs. So both you and Bo are in this project. <laughs> cool. And to top it off, I used uh, Abyss Reverb by Psyche and I turned the shimmer all the way up to 0 0.4. So if you play it back, it goes like this. And along with the original. And so I rendered those two things and uh, and this thing. It, yeah, it stops because we did this, uh, we did this thing yesterday. <laughs> ah. Yeah, that setting. I I like that setting. I yeah. I think it should be I the like default. Too, yeah. mm -hmm. Anyway, so I rendered those. I made them into WAVs and I created uh, little samplers like I did last time. Now all I have to do is figure out how to do the linkings, and here comes the embarrassing part. I couldn't figure it out, so I beat the bullet and became a patron to David Healy. And I sent him a um, direct message. You see, David Healy on his Patreon, he has some uh, exclusive tutorials and also some project files. And you can directly message him for any questions. And I sent him a message and uh, I hope he replies. And that's all I have to show for you today. Nice. It's nice of you to support the work of uh, the yeah. people doing these things. I promise I will be a subscriber to your Patreon sometime. Yeah, now it's a great time to plug this. Everyone should go to the yeah. link in the description and go to my website. Go. And from there, you can find all the ways you can support our work here on this stream. Support Leandro. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm putting this there, right? Yeah, support Leandro right here. <laughs> and it worked. Right. So yeah, this is my update for today. Excellent. Uh, and the the issues that you had, do you want to talk about them? Do you do you want to talk about what you tried, what went wrong, error messages, that sort of thing, or do you think you want more time to figure it out? Oh, uh, the only thing I had, I, I actually tried to create some uh, variables that uh, directly referenced those modulators, and I failed. Uh, so I had to, uh, I was forced to do the exact thing that David does. And now I have cleaned all the all the errors, but the problem is this: that if I create a, a script, if I go here, let's try it. Uh, so, oh, this is a function that I should uh, I should show. If you right click on something, you press this that says create generic script reference. It copies it to your clipboard. And it does this. Uh, but uh, David uh, actually changed this to something else, to this mod thing. Uh, but I don't know if it works. Wait, will it work? Huh? What language is this again? I think, I, 
I think I asked you this before, but I forgot the answer. What language is yeah. this? Uh, shall we look it up? <laughs> I don't remember, actually. But it, uh, it seems to me like it is inspired by languages like JavaScript and C. Yeah. But it is its own thing. It looks like a different language because things like const var, I don't remember mm -hmm. seeing that anywhere. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's and it's more like in Java? Like Java, maybe, yeah. No, I, I don't think done, that that exists in Java. Const is not a thing in Java. You can use var if you want to have the behavior of auto in C++. You don't want to declare the type because it can be inferred by the initialization. That is something you can do in Java these days. But const... Mm. Oh, no, I think it by makes way, sense. The, yeah, okay. Yeah, you are... You are trying to declare something that will not change and you want, don't want mm -hmm. to say what its type is. So you say const var, yeah. is that a thing? I don't remember seeing that before. Yeah, it is. So David does have another tutorial on his Patreon and it uh, f f helps you link this XY path to knobs, but I watched it and uh, again, it doesn't do what I want it to do. All it does is uh, make what you see here but uh, you actually see the knobs right here and you control the x y pad with the knobs that's it or well, what i really want to do is assign those values to the decibels values in uh, gain modulation that's my main problem and if i create another midi controller i don't know how to link it here but i did see something interesting and maybe this is how you do it and <laughs> i cannot find it in the interface again uh, because I I loaded I, I said in the previous meeting that I loaded some of the other people's HISE projects to see how what they do, and there is this thing somewhere uh, called Script Node, and uh, I'm gonna load that project actually. I'm gonna load. Uh, let's save this. Fotis, uh, am yes. I understand correctly that? Uh all uh, variables inside scripts are local for the uh, i don't know for for example all variables yeah, they're local. sample are local yes yes you see this thing right here you have to declare but, them but once which is declared outside functions for example const p n l x y yeah this is the name this is the name of the uh, of the panel PNLXY. You have to declare it here, and then you do okay. things. Are, are are they also local or they are? Yeah, I did it, I did them myself. If I make a different name to the to the path to the knob, oh wait. <laughs> if I give it a different, what? this is the ID. This is the per, the constant. If I change it here, then I have to change it on the whole code. Just what I want to say, maybe you can use some kind of global variables to access x, y I don't know, values from the samplers? Yes, that's probably what I should do, yeah. Um, it, I it's kind of global e easy yeah. thing, e easy style, but probably there is some ways to make it more elegant, but... but. Yeah. I understand what you want to say. I'll just want to show you one final thing and then I'll uh, t uh, give this over to you guys. I'm going to load this other thing that somebody else made on uh, on GitHub, the, this uh, granular sampler called uh, Oi Grandad. Uh, oh no, wait, I used the wrong. No, uh, it's open archive. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I have a question before uh, about this X Y yeah. pad. Before we move to the other project, mm -hmm. is this a one-way binding in the sense that you move the dodge and it changes the parameters, or is this a two-way binding because you can change the parameters using the knobs and the dodge will move as well? Let's see. Uh, no, it's one way. 
Yeah, one way is much easier to implement conceptually. That's why I asked. And I guess I can rule out Java. This isn't Java because of the way we are declaring lists or arrays in line four. That's not Java syntax, the square brackets. Oh, wait. Oh, oh yeah. The, yeah, you're right. I actually discovered it. But yeah, it's one way. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, could you repeat that? What I'm pointing out the that the way? language you are writing in is not Java. Mm -hmm. It's not JavaScript. Mm -hmm. It is probably its own little thing because there yeah. are parts of the syntax that are recognizable, but they don't match any one language that I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I will have to watch a lot of David's tutorials and study his uh, files. Uh, and are I'm there many open source projects you can refer to using this technology? Well, David has a few projects and uh, I showed these ones, the Genesine, the Grandad, and these three things, but these three things are just sampler instruments when they are lacking the samples and you have to buy them individually, but the projects are free on GitHub. <laughs> yeah, uh, anyway. So here is a granddad. Let's load Internet it. Internet saying that this is JavaScript. Oh, so it is a JavaScript. Might be a modified JavaScript. It so must be because const var is not JavaScript syntax. You have to choose either const or var, but line five is not valid JavaScript. Oh, come on. Where is, oh yeah. So you can see that it is uh very well made very intricate i have no idea how you do these things but hopefully i will learn and where did i find the script there it is oh so you have to create uh, a container and then an effects tab and in the effects you choose script effects and if you press this little button here that uh, pop up the new window it takes you to this workspace which is called script node. And I am hoping that uh, if I find this, that I will be able to do this uh, like a modular way to connect cables. Like I could connect uh, those uh, parameters to those samplers, right? It could be possible if I create a, but then and you can see that this is a good global cable and they have to figure out how to tell this cable to go out of here and go <laughs> in here, <laughs> global cables. So yeah, it is a headache, but uh, I'll figure it out. And hopefully David replies, he will reply, I'm sure of it. Uh, this is so, amazing. Yeah. Anytime you show this, there is like more and more to it. Now there is a modular interface yeah, uh, where you can drag cables. That's yeah. amazing. And see what sent a me message on Skype with the answer. AJIC is not JavaScript. It is its own thing. Oh. Yeah. So, sorry. Okay, yeah. so I stopped sharing my it's screen. Understood. And that's it from me today. Sounds I learned good. I failed, but I learned I failed, but I learned a lot. <laughs> good. And that's something. I studied. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that is the purpose of a study yep. group. Mm. Right. So I can quickly go in and go next and say that I did not work on C++ very much this week. <laughs> oh, I worked on other yeah. things. I worked on the auto mixer. I worked on um, decrimped filters. <laughs> and if you want to talk more about that, I'm happy to, because it is yeah. digital signal processing after all. But yeah, you did a, you did an epic uh, stream of almost four hours. It was and very I only long. Saw parts of it. Yeah, it was much longer than I was expecting it, it to be. <laughs> yeah, but it was a great stream. It, it had a lot of traction. I was super tired that day. I mean, I watched the first few minutes and then I collapsed at my bed, <laughs> and so I watched some of the replay. But you did a great job, and I downloaded that project. Oh, thanks. It was great. Yeah, I saw that you were using the filter from yeah. that project. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, unless people are interested in talking more about decrimped filters, 
which I understand may not be everyone's cup of tea, then I think that that's my update. And I think that perhaps I will make the promise that for the next meeting, I will do some proper C++ just to get the thing going again. But mm -hmm. with that, Siwit, take it away. <laughs> what What is Cram filters? Oh, thanks for asking. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I, I didn't watch that stream, sorry. No, yeah, it's fine. So in a nutshell, filters like the, the, your regular filters on an equalizer, when you approach the Nyquist frequency at high frequencies, depending on how the filter was designed, it may go out of shape. It may get thinner than it should be and asymmetric so the bell is no longer a bell, it is more like a, a roller coaster kind of thing. That's what cramping is, and it is a problem that occurs in one particular way of designing digital filters, but there are other ways of designing digital filters that don't have this issue. It just so happens that uh, the easiest way is this way that cramps. So. What I was doing on this long stream that Fotis referred to was to compare the performance in terms of CPU of the cramped and decramped filters. And yeah, there is a whole backstory to this, but that was that that is the, the gist of it. It sounds interesting. It is, I think so. I talked about it for almost four hours. <laughs> so I, I find it very interesting. Oh man, I just got some bad news. Uh, so remember my friend Bill, who we created the drum plugin with? Mm -hmm. uh, he was recently diagnosed with cancer. Oh. And he made a, a vlog about it. And I'm gonna check it out later. But he's, he's, uh, he doesn't say more details about it. I'm gonna listen to it. But yeah. Please, uh, fingers crossed that Bill gets better. Yeah. If he gets rid of cancer. Yeah. All right. So, Sewitz, what do you have for us? For us. Uh... Oh, we have video. I have video. Yay. Hey, hey, hello. Do you want to show up on the stream as well? Wait a second. Wait a second. It should be better now. Okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring Marcia. your yeah. I'm going to bring your camera into the stream if that's all right by you. And there it is. Oh. Oh, your baby is growing. It has grown so much since the last time. Oh my God. So now we are uh, looking at different, uh, I want to say, fade ins and fade outs. Oh yeah, right. I remember people on Discord talking about this. There is a Reaper forum thread about the equations for the different kinds of fades in Reaper. Oh, yeah. And perhaps this is what this is about. But uh, see, it's, if you are saying something, I don't think we are hearing it. Yeah. Did the microphone die? Maybe. Oh 
Uh, now it's better? Oh, yes. Now you, we can hear you, yes. I probably pressed with my finger to move the mic. Uh. So, okay, so, so yeah. I guess you have to recap because we saw the different shapes of the fades, but we didn't hear your explanation about them. Yeah, I've got di different uh, shapes of them and I can bend between. So the main shape is li linear filter, yeah, li 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 like this, and I, using those formulas from Reaper Forum, I can, can, can build different types of curves. <laughs> and, <laughs> and those shapes are crazier than the shapes we can get in Reaper, I think. So you are taking the formulas, but you are inputting values that go beyond what you can do in Reaper, unless I haven't played around with the fades that much in Reaper. Uh, but... It's still, this is the same formula. You 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 can use them. Ba basically, it's math, and then you. I don't know what the main point of this page, for example, but but it's kind of funny to have more than one. <laughs> so yeah, this is what what one. One one thing what I've made. Let's... Do you can you speak like to the different applications of these curves? Because to be honest, I tend to just use one shape of fade, the default. I have never changed it. I haven't played around with it that much, but it seems to me as different shapes of fades will have different purposes, and I would love to learn more about that. Uh, to be honest, I also want to lo learn more about that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, but basically these functions, what I'm using here, I can use everywhere. For example, in a DSR generator, yes, for example, this would be attack, attack or DK. This style of attack, I don't know. In general, sorry, I don't know what the purpose is of the formulas, where, where it can be used. I just thought that it could be, it will be funny to have something like that. Yeah, those formulas are always great to have in your back pocket because they can be used for fades. I suppose they can also be used for animations. They can be the plot of position over time. They can be used probably for wave shaping, though I'm not sure yeah, if yeah. They, they sound any good. But these kinds of smoothing formulas are useful in many, many places. I guess they could be the transfer curve of a compressor. I think so, yeah, it could be. So why, why not? Oh. Say what? Is everything working? Wait, wait. No, nothing works. Well, why? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a good luck for us all today. Oh, wait a second. I got it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I got the thing. We captured live that moment when you realize something's wrong. Or you realize <laughs> what is wrong. And it, yeah, yeah. You can shout, oh, it works, it works. <laughs> uh, for now, it should work. It should work. Wait, let me see. Is it... <laughs> oh. I... I want, I want, I want. Okay, well, let's check. No, no, nothing works. And uh, damn. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Hold on, I'm gonna get some water. Okay. Sampler. 
right. So we need here some sorry that I'm not prepared for <laughs> showcase. Okay. But I guess in summary okay, you worked on the fades with the different shapes. And what else do you work on? What is it that you're trying to get to work. So the basic thing that I can record something right now. I hope it there is a bearing or more sound. So uh, I I've made some recording mechanism and looks like it's working right now. Sure, it it will for the future. So I can record things. <laughs> Isn't cool? I think it's cool. And of course, I, I can do everything that I can do with my sampler, but basically what I've done, I've made another sampler which is sending sound, but we don't hear it because it's not connected to mixer. The second sampler is sending sound to the first sampler, and the first, first sampler is recording everything. Like, <laughs> so yes, yeah, so somehow that, that's what I've done for the past two weeks. But I have one question. What is it? I've got one sampler. I rip rip and when I'm pitching it's some like sandy maybe you can hear the difference other it when when the root pitch and the pitch of the note is equal then it sounds okay yeah if it's going upscaling, yeah, then it also sounds okay. But when I downscale my my, my sounds, it, there is some some mm. some some noises, and I, I have to get rid of them, and I don't know how to. Somebody at least know how it's old. Yeah, okay, so I will start by reiterating the question because your connection was kind of crackling there. I'm not sure if I understand the, the question that you have. So you have this uh, this thing that plays a sample faster or slower. And when you play it faster, it's all right. But when you play it slower, it crackles a bit, right? Yes, Okay. exactly. Uh, I'm not sure what could be causing that, but how are you doing the slowdown? Oh, did we lose him? No, I'm here, sorry. Oh. <laughs> I switched from the phone to the... the my, my. See? So, 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 yeah, the, there is some kind of problem because I'm stretching out uh, the sound and 
probably it was uh, when, when I made this this algorithm, but, but I didn't just. Uh, just so I can remember, you created your own algorithm for time stretching, correct? Not my own. Uh, you took one <laughs> and you yes. implemented it. Here. It wasn't like the one uh, Ableton has, right? Is it a simple, just uh, buffer stretching algorithm that, like those default ones that Reaper has? That Prob makes... Probably yes, because I'm not sure that Ableton will share their yeah, algorithms exactly. with me. Of course not. But there is a sound touch and also rubber band library, and I'm sure rubber band library is open source. Yeah, I and know it's about it. In the river. Yeah. Probably I have to use it as opportunity, mm -hmm. like a different option of resampling and stretching. And, and, and also I want to understand how it works and probably I still need to learn some math more yeah, but... deeper. And, and, and. And also you're using the the simplest form of stretching that's yeah, just of repaging. Of course, of the, course. The classic one, the tape one, as some people say it. Uh, of course, totally agree. Mm. But probably it will be the next step uh, uh -huh. of next iteration of all my project. Uh, and I will do it someone later, a couple of years, I, I don't know. <laughs> And you have done amazing progress so far. Yeah, but yeah, I'm not sure what could be causing that crackling. If you're doing the most straightforward thing, which is to just have your sample, which is a series of numbers, and you traverse these numbers in, I guess if you want to slow things down in smaller steps, mm. so you don't play one sample at per sample, you go and play like half a sample per sample or mm. something like that, then perhaps the problem that is causing the crackling could be in the interpolation because you will have to interpolate mm. between two samples somehow. That is my first guess, I suppose, that it could be the, the interpolation that could be going wrong. Do you think that that could be the case? Yes, I, I think, yeah. I, I'm not sure at all. So, 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 sorry, but but yeah, ba basically, I think the algorithm is is the problem. Oh, so, because it's simple as it can be, and, and and I made it just for testing purposes. I can test my audio engine and then all the things around. So that's that wasn't the main goal of. No. <laughs> sure. And do you know what is the interpolation algorithm? If am I if I am right, and there is an interpolation algorithm going on? Uh, pro probably. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. Probably there is no. Okay, I I can share my screen. Yeah. If you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give yeah. me a moment to pull this up. Yeah. Okay. You're good. Uh, so basically, basically here it is. If uh, I don't change, no. If I'm changing pitch, I'm calculating pitch factor. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is uh, playing note divided by the root pitch, and then I'm cal calculating how much uh, of audio data I need to read by multiplying that factor by the frames, by the buffer size. For now it's 256. Then for I'm reading the part of audio to the temporary buffer and all magic I think happens here. The time putting one sample on the right place and the second what what wow is it 
this is the sum of the actual sample and the next sample divided by two. Yeah, that to me is seems it like it could be the problem, couldn't it? Because if you are playing things faster, then you will be skipping over some samples. Yeah. You don't need all of the samples in the pack, in the buffer, because you are playing faster, so you can skip over some of them. But if you're playing things more slowly, then you need to interpolate. You need to find the samples between the samples that you have. And to do that, I don't think that just taking the average is good because the average, if you simply take the average between a sample and the next one, effectively you are doing a stair step kind of thing. You are doing some, some kind of sample and hold yeah, kind of thing. And I think that instead what you should look into is some other interpolation algorithms, the simplest of which is probably sample and hold. But the next simplest algorithm for interpolation is linear interpolation. So you would not floor you know, on line 375, uh, you are flooring the result. But so in that case, this you is not audio. This is index uh, of the buffer, like... Exactly. Where... Yeah, where what I'm saying is, you don't want to floor that. What you want is to have this read index as a fraction. And then you floor when you are indexing into the buffer. So you floor on this line that you have your cursor on. Of course, you have to take the floor because mm -hmm. the sample is in a buffer and you have to take a sample from the buffer you want the index to be an integer so you're flooring that case but when you're doing the sum and divide by two when you're doing the average in between the samples you don't simply add up the samples from now and from the next sample and divide by two instead you weight the samples by how far and how near they are to the read index so if you are, at, let's say that there is sample zero and sample one, and you are trying to get sample 0 0.1, then you would weight sample zero with a weight of 90%, and you would weight sample one with a weight of 10%, and then you would add these two values. So you would do a weighted sum of the two samples. That's how you do linear interpolation. And then you can get fancier with, um, Lagrange interpolation, you can do uh, sync interpolation, but I, I, I think that for your purpose, probably linear interpolation will be good enough. We did mm -hmm. linear interpolation when we implemented pitch shifting, which isn't really what you are doing, but it is similar enough. So Arya and I implemented together a pitch shifter based on the concept of buffering samples and replaying them at okay. different rates. Okay and we use the linear interpolation, it works well enough. It can do the monster voices. Yeah, and the uh, sync inter interpolation was uh, one of the, uh, the resampling options in the Reaper, right? It is too. It is too a way of uh, resampling. Uh, if you want to change the sampling rate of audio, you can use yeah. sync interpolation if you want. And that is, the ideal way of doing things, right? If you want mm -hmm. to recreate an analog waveform from uh, digital samples, mm -hmm. sync interpolation is the, the canonical answer. It is the correct way of doing things, but it's also super slow and you're trying to run this in real time. So probably yeah. not the way to go. Yeah, probably it could, it will solve my problem. So thank you <laughs> helping. Give it a try, give it a try, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, probably next time. No, yeah, okay. <laughs> I have a couple other ideas what I can do till the next time. Okay, what are they? I had, okay, I had a couple ideas. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Fair it enough. It happens to all of us. <laughs> No, no, I don't remember. Okay, well, surprises next time then. <laughs> All right. So yeah, th there is a couple of minor bugs that I'm run into, but 
Okay, I mean, obviously it will fix that. Uh -huh. All right then, so uh, anything else that you all want to share? Uh, I just wanted to say one more thing about HISC is that now that I am a subscriber to David Healy, uh, the, he also posts those snippets. I don't know if you remember on the uh, one of the other streams that it is possible to actually uh, concatenate is the right word to to compress like an entire HISC state in just a block of text. Uh, it's uh, like a, it's like a code that uh, HISC decodes, and suddenly you have a whole HISC project loaded in front of you. And this is how David actually helped me once in the forums of HISC. He told me to post a snippet of my project, and he did it, and so he replicated it. And so I'm gonna check out uh, David's snippets on his Patreon, and I I use the top tier on the Patreon, which is $10 a month, which is fairly reasonable given the huge amount of resources that he provides you with. Uh, uh, so I saw that there isn't, there aren't many comments on the posts. I guess uh, David helps it, every person individually. And yeah, for the next time, like you said, and thank you for reminding me that I have to do the, that knob thing on that bread synth. So if I figure out how to do this uh, XY pad to connect with the samplers, then I'll, it, it should probably be a similar, uh, a similar may, a method of working with that other synth as well. So we, once I learned that method, I should be good to go. And also I, I realized something that the more we do these study groups and the closer I get to coding things, and now that uh, Seawitz showed his own code that I felt slightly more comfortable today, I don't know why, because I coded something today. Usually all code scares me. That, that's great. Yeah. All right. So yeah, this group has had a positive impact of all of us, I hope. Awesome. Yeah, I am having a lot of fun and learning a lot, that's for sure. So are you all good to wrap up? Yes. Okay then, so thank you Foshis and Siwitz for joining us on the meeting and uh, thank you to Bo and Mage for being here on the chat and with that I see hey, you guys. all in two weeks I think and yes, yeah, go ahead and do some amazing things in C++ and digital signal processing and HISC and everything else. See you next time. <laughs> bye. And keep studying. <laughs> bye. Thank, thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching the stream, you know how great it has been Or maybe it sucked and I am glad that you stuck with me And so we'll all will be Back together for some more coding or talking or chilling The next time I'll be streaming